Hello everybody, I'm Nick and today I want to talk about one of the topics that I think are the most true statements about software engineering in 2020 and for the years to come. And that is that being a good coder isn't enough anymore. Before I dive into the topic and I explain what I have learned firsthand, please if you like what you see, leave a like on this video and subscribe for more content. So we're going to start this with a little bit of background. Back in the day, and that's not so far before our current day, and you can actually see it nowadays as well, Monolith was king. Monolith or monolithic applications were huge applications where all the code was dumped in there and it was very easy to deploy, quite hard to develop, and then the more code you added, the more entangled the project became. But because you only had this one thing and everything was there, potentially with a single SQL uh, database behind it, everything was in one place and you just coded your application and that was it, nothing else. Nowadays, microservices are king. If you want to achieve scale, monolithic application just cannot do it anymore. It's just impossible. So for that reason, we break our applications in small pieces, as small as humanly possible, as long as they're doing one thing, of course. And we deploy them individually and we scale them individually to achieve the scale that we need. This has the weird side effect that because the code base is so small nowadays, you don't actually write much code or much complicated code in these applications. Instead, what you do is you're solving the problem with the solution, the whole solution, so multiple microservices hanging all together. This means that the problem is no longer a programming problem, a coding problem, but it is a data problem, an architecture problem. Fundamentally, any system does effectively two things. It moves data from one point to another, that can be from one database to the other, that can be from what the user provides in uh, the API to something else in the database, anything. And then the other part is you retrieve data. So it's a get request on an endpoint, you hit the website, you do any of those things. It's, it's literally those two things, movement of data and data retrieval. So if you think about it, it's very much a data problem, but data needs to consistently return itself effectively and fast. Now, as the database grows and your application needs to scale with it, you have to guarantee that all the data is actually retrieved as effectively and efficiently as possible. This means that you have to move the data in different data stores to guarantee that the data access patterns that you have in your system can actually work with that system effectively, that database effectively. It's basically the reason why things like Cosmos DB and DynamoDB are very popular. It's because they can scale practically indefinitely and have very fast rides. And it's exactly the same thing why you have things like Kafka Event Hub and Kinesis in AWS to move data, move events very, very fast. It's because they do one thing very effectively. This fundamentally means that your code is no longer required to be complicated. What's actually complicated or the most complicated part in that sense is the architecture of the system. You have to be able to know what tools you have in your disposal and learn how you can use them to solve the problem effectively. Nowadays, a good software engineer needs to be able to solve the problem by designing a good solution. Now, don't get me wrong. There are solution architects whose their whole job is to actually do that thing, to design a system and then effectively deliver it to engineers to develop. And that works fine, but as an engineer, as a software engineer, if you want to go to the next level at this point, there are actually two things you need to do. You need to learn to do solution architecture yourself, you need to learn those services, and you need to be more involved into DevOps. These are the two things that I think, if you do now, there are literally 30 and 30% 30 of the software engineer equation, the last 30 being coding, of course. Things are very much moving towards the cloud approach, and for that reason, Azure and AWS are the two most popular cloud services, with Google Cloud Platform being the third one in this sense. And they have some services that you need, and I cannot emphasize that enough, that you need to learn how they work fundamentally behind the scenes to be able to use them in your design. Those services for Azure are Azure Cosmos DB, Service Bus, and Event Hub or Event Grid. And likewise for AWS, it is SNS, SQS, uh, DynamoDB, and also Kinesis. You should at least know the respective services, how exactly they work, literally destroy the documentation, read everything about them, understand how you can use them effectively and what features they have, because it's probably one of the biggest favors you can do yourself now to be very useful in solution architecture. In terms of general services, I mean, it goes without saying, but MariaDB, MySQL, and SQL Server are probably 
the biggest thing you should know regarding uh, relational databases. Uh, Oracle is there as well and Postgres, but effectively they all stand behind the same idea of the relational database. So I believe that everybody is fairly familiar with how that works. What everybody is not familiar with how it works is NoSQL databases. Also another very useful service that you should learn how it fundamentally works is Elasticsearch. It's very useful for both for monitoring, metrics, logging. You can use it with Kibana. There's so many. The stack is, is very useful. You should really, really nail that. And last but not least, it's Kafka. Azure and AWS have their own respective Kafka-like eventing service. Remember, you need to learn the idea behind those services and not necessarily the services themselves. Because DynamoDB works the same way as um, Cosmos DB almost the way uh, MongoDB works and Cassandra. So behind the scenes, the logic is kind of the same. Now, in terms of DevOps, there are so many tools that are around, but if I had to name a few, I'd say that you really need to learn how to be familiar at least with uh, Jenkins, uh, TeamCity. For .NET engineers, also Octopus is fairly uh, popular, so I'd like to uh, know that as well. But the landscape on, in that sense changes so quickly that I cannot really recommend something that's there to stay. Obviously, if you're in Azure, Azure DevOps is also uh, a great thing you should learn. And if you're in GitHub, you can use uh, GitHub's version as well, which is, I think, GitHub Actions. So everything I described until now, literally all the things I talked about, coding, solution architecture, and DevOps, is the package for a fully-fledged software engineer in 2020 and for the years to come. Just because of where the landscape goes, I don't think microservices are going anywhere. If anything, they're going to break down to smaller pieces, potentially nanoservices. Um, I've read a little bit about that. I'm not convinced yet. Uh, but microservices aren't going anywhere, the, mo the model works, and if we need more, uh, we will discover more. And same goes for NoSQL databases. Fundamentally, the way they work behind the scenes uh, is very smart, and it's effectively it's designed to scale indefinitely, so I can't imagine them going anywhere anytime soon. Remember, coding, especially in microservices, is not hard anymore. You don't have complicated things to do. What is an API? It's an endpoint that things like .NET Core, Laravel, Django make it very, very easy to have one uh, running. And then there is a call that's being translated into some domain logic, and then you insert something in a database. That's it. What's a microservice? That's it. That's an API. And then the other part of the spectrum is you have something like Kafka, Kinesis, Event Hub that produces events, or SNS, SQS, and Service Bus that produces messages. And then you take those messages, you read them, and you push them somewhere else. It's all about data movement and data in general. So you need to be familiar with data retrieval and data storage. There are many topics around architecture, and I'm actually going to leave a few links from talks that I think will really help you um, down below if you want to check them out. It's from conferences, Microsoft, Google, different, different people. Um, and I'd highly recommend you actually read more on the topic. I know DevOps is probably not the thing that every software engineer needs to do, but it would really, really, really take you to the next level. Trust me on this one, because I've seen it on myself. Knowing and being familiar with DevOps would really help you doing your job very, very effectively. You don't have to wait on DevOps resources that are usually harder to find and less uh, and present in a company. In terms of balancing, actually DevOps engineers are the lowest uh, that I've seen in every company in general. So you have software engineers that you have plenty and then you have QA engineers, but usually the DevOps engineers are the, are the lowest in terms of numbers just because some people don't actually want to do it or some people do want to do it. But if you know at least the fundamentals, it would really, really help you. Please trust me on this one. That's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.